it's uh, week one of our, our next course that we're doing and quite a few people wanted to or some people from um, the Friday class uh, wanted uh, suggested doing a few things so and um, so we're going to be looking at insects and creepy crawlies and stuff like that and butterflies and moths and, and things and actually it's a it's a fascinating subject to look at um, when you actually start really looking at these uh, creatures you start to realize just how um, amazing and beautiful they are so we're going to be uh, doing a bit of entomology which I think is the correct word and um, we're also going to look at um, some uh, plants and flowers and uh, somebody else said they wanted to look at trees so um, during the course of the course over the next 10 weeks we'll be sort of going through some of those things and then perhaps bringing them together to make uh, a nice uh, like piece or a few uh, designs and things uh, paintings and so forth um, so today I thought we would just dive straight in and start looking at a few insects and things um, so I, I got some photographs and things together for you of some insects there's also some folders with different artworks and things that have been done um, <clears throat> to do with like bees and things like that and with different techniques so we'll probably uh, dive into some of those a bit later on but first of all We'll just start with um, some some drawing. And we're going to start with pencil um, today, but um, we'll go over to the wall and have a look at what we've got on there. So here's my creepy crawlies uh, on here. Um, I've got uh, some different bugs and butterflies on here, um, all of which you can find on the uh, the drive that we've got. So you can print off any of these yourself. I've printed them off quite big. I've printed these off. Uh, about a four size and if you uh, looked at your email you'll see that uh, I'd like you to if you can work a little bit bigger um, this week um, because what we're going to do is going to put these different insects together um, or different um, versions of similar insects together on one page but use some different techniques um, so we're going to mix up the techniques a little bit but we'll start with pencil first of all today I've decided to do this um, cheeky chappy up here with the massive uh, fangs, I don't know what you call them. Um, uh, so I'm going to be drawing that one uh, just there um, and we're going to look at using texture and um, pencils uh, shading together to show the form and the texture of, of the insect. Okay so I'm just going to um, get rid of those for a moment. And I want to show you um, what I was thinking of um, getting us to have a look at here. So there's this sort of thing. So I found these on the antenna. I thought I thought these were quite nice because um, there's a chance here to look at overlapping of different insects, but also to look at colour. So I'm planning on doing a little bit of colour pencil as well as um, just straight pencil. Uh, and then perhaps we can move into a few other things like pen and, and that and put more marks into it so we can really layer up um, these ideas. I've chose some particularly pretty ones I think here uh, with the butterflies and these uh, lovely moths on the other side. I think there's perhaps a few other insects in there that I haven't named but um, that's the kind of thing we're aiming for um, with what we're going to do. So uh, now I wanted to show you um, one or two artists that um, also um, are inspired by insects. One is called Rosalind Monk. Uh, so Rosalind Monk does something very different with the insects, um, which is something possibly if people are interested in it, we could go down this route as well. So you'll notice it looks quite realistic, but at the same time, there's all these like crazy patterns all over the insect as well, um, which lend themselves to the maybe to the textures and things you might find on the insects. And the second one is very different. Now this guy actually uses um, real insects that have already died apparently. Um, you can Apparently you can order insects, uh, collectors order insects um, which have um, died and everything and they use them and collect them. But this guy, Chris Marley, has actually used the insects to create these amazing um, these amazing kind of collages of insects which I'm not really sure if I like the idea of using real insects but I do like 
what's been produced. So anyway, I thought just for a bit of fun, um, here are the pictures um, that I've collected. I've got an A3 sheet of paper just here, which I'm going to be working into uh, tonight. And um, I've also got um, a grid. Now, everybody who comes to the class quite regularly will know all about um, using the grids and things. So I am going to go through it again because there's a few people perhaps who don't know about that. Um, but first of all, I'll just show you this one. So this one is also on the website. Um, and as I've said to you previously, um, on a lot of these insects, there's lots and lots of texture and detail um, that we can sort of have a go at uh, trying to recreate, but just in black and white using a pencil um, for tonight. OK, so um, some of the uh, tools that you can use, um, obviously, we're going to use um, a color pencil or sorry, a, a black and white pencil or a graphite pencil. Um, <clears throat> But um, one of the things to um, bear in mind when you're using uh, pencil crayons is that um, I'll just move them out of my face. There you go. I don't like um, bugs all over my face. So um, the thing to remember when you're using um, graphite pencils is that pencils are brilliant for um, layering. And in fact, that's how you should kind of approach using pencils is starting with, say, one layer of shading and then working back over the top with texture and then perhaps using some other tools to help blend and to help um, bring those things together. So if I take this um, fellow over here, which I've just shown, and I, I, I draw, say, the basic shape of his, I don't know what this part, we should find out what these bits are called, actually, from the insect. That would be quite interesting to find out. So if you've got the basic shape like this, uh, I'm not going to go exactly uh, for the shapes that are on here. Um, but first of all, you might decide to, I'm just going to put something underneath because it's a bit thin. So, and that's another thing to bear in mind is when you're using pencils, try to work on a soft surface such as um, a bit of newspaper. If you've not, if you're not working directly into a sketchbook, that is. Now I'm using the side of the pencil just here. Oh, sorry, I'm coming a bit closer. Mm -hmm. There we go. So I'm using the side of my pencil um, in order to make this kind of soft area of shading on here. And I can put in these areas up on the side of the insect, just along either side of here. Oops. I mean, what, what pencil are you using? Ah, oh, right. That's a good point, actually. So I am using a 6B at the moment here. Um, so a 6B, a B pencil, is much softer than, say, something like a 2B. So it goes from the lower numbers of Bs right up to, I think, the high, one of the highest ones is around a, nine, a 9B. And that will get um, a nice dark amount of shading because basically the lead is much softer so more of the graphite comes off the pencil and onto the surface of the paper that that means basically you can shade a little bit darker so in a minute I think yes I'm going to swap over to a 2b which I've got just here so you can almost start to create this shiny effect um, very quickly on the back of this insects I don't know what you call it his armor is back. If anyone knows, let me know. So we can shade these areas. I'm still using the side of the pencil to keep it soft. And then in a minute, you'll see me swap to the 2B. And I'll be doing, um, when I do my drawing, you'll be able to see me do it um, a little bit more. OK. And then um, now, a few tools you can use. Uh, and some of you will have these. Some of you won't. So you can use like something like a cotton bud or even like um, a piece of paper or something or a paper towel is quite good. But these are um, they're like thick pieces of um, paper, really. It's paper pulp. And you can rub the surface of um, the drawing and start to smooth it off even more like this. And that's going to help take away some of the graininess and blend it a little bit. So you'll see that I'm not being too careful about edges or anything like that, because I just want to get some graphite on the surface first of all. There we go. And then um, after that, I can just move that over a bit there. I'm not in the right position tonight. So on here, we've got all these like small marks and everything. So with the sharper pencil, now this is a 2B, so it's got a bit of a harder lead on it, which means I can do much sharper lines. You can do sharp lines with the 6B, but you'll find it runs down very quickly. 
And this idea then of layering comes into play. So I can start putting on some different marks to start building up the texture and some of those scratches and stuff like that onto the surface of the insect. And you can even, you know, make some areas heavier than others as well. You can see that. Now, the other thing that um, some of you will be familiar with is a putty rubber as well. So you see all that I put that um, original layer of graphite in there, and now I'm building back over the top of it. I could switch back again to my other pencil, my 8B, or was it an 8B I said? Yeah, no, 6B. And I can put in some other marks. So I can use stippling in here as well, because there's like all these tiny little dots on, the, on his back. Now there's some lines going down the side here as well. I get a bit more of a crisper mark with the two Bs, so it's quite nice to have a little play around with the different pencils. So, you know, switch between the pencils, even if you try and go, if you go into the H pencils, um, you can get much finer shading using that, um, which creates a nice layer, again, between the two, or between the different pencils that you're using. So eventually, if you keep going with it, so it's not just a case of, oh, I've shaded it, I can move on to the next bit. Sometimes it's a case of coming back to it and layering back over the top. Now, the other thing that I just mentioned is the putty rubber, which is like a squishy rubber like this, like that. You can pull apart and things. And um, I don't know if I can get any, so I can get closer. So you can start removing areas, including the marks you've made with the 2B, to add extra strong, brighter highlights which starts to add contrast between the dark bits and the light bits and helps you to make things stand out. If you shaded an area that you didn't want shading, you can take out all of the graphite there or a lot of it, especially if you haven't embossed the paper, you know, um, press too hard on it and stuff. And then you can go back in and refine those areas. So you can start building up this three-dimensional effect in the work. So some of the techniques on here that I've been using um, would be things like stippling, um, which is like dots over here. I've used a little bit of hatching. So you've got stippling, oops, stippling. We've got hatching or ragged lines. So you can make it feel different with your lines if you, look, if you use, move the pencil around. So you see, I'm just twisting the pencil slightly as I do it. Focus, there you go. Um, and then there's things like cross hatching. So if I move down here a little bit, We've got maybe a sphere. So if I want to make this sphere, I think my camera's a bit distorted actually, but so you can use curved lines and then curved lines again, but at a slightly different angle. And then again, curved lines. And just keep building it up like I was saying. And then here, obviously, if you apply less pressure, pressure with your pencil, you can also build up some tone there as well, that lighter tone. So if you're a bit unsure about shading and things, it's good to say have a practice drawing circles and spheres and shading them like this to make them look 3D and round as well. So there's a whole range of different things that you can apply to your layering when you're working on your um, insect in a bit. All right, so I thought I'd just do a brief intro, intro to that. Now, um, I'm gonna do this um, bug that I had before, which is now, be scurried off somewhere. There we go. Oh, there he is. So I'll zoom back out again. So um, for those of you that haven't done this before, um, to help you draw um, an object a little bit more accurately, it's a great, a great uh, little tool to use. Is a grid. Okay. So the grid divides the space up into smaller sections that you can then uses bite-sized bits that you can um, look at the negative shapes as well as the positive shapes. So the positive shapes being the bug's jaws here and the negative shapes the bit behind it. So um, this, which I put onto the website for anyone who wants one, is um, a template for making the grid a bit quicker. So all I've, all I've done here is just make a mark on each corner 
and each line and then taken it away and joined up all of those lines. All right, so um, as I mentioned before, we're going to create a composition. So we're going to arrange some bugs on top of each other. So for my first bug, I'm going to do this one, as you know, but I'm going to decide where on my paper I want this bug to be. Now, um, I'm going to, and we haven't done this before, but what, what I'm going to do, rather than just plonk it straight in the center like that, I'm going to move it to a, a different space so it looks like it's crawling a bit more across the paper. So all you do with your template is you draw or you make the little points that you're going to join up. And don't forget, don't do those lines too dark. Otherwise, you might, you'll help, you might struggle to rub them out later. OK, so I've done all the points around the edges. And then all I do is I'm going to do it really light. So I don't even know if you're going to be able to see it like that. So I'm just going from one end to the other at the moment. And then I'll show you how I find those shapes so the crossways. So I've got my bug and my grid at a funny angle here. And it's the quickest and easiest way to get exactly the same grid onto your paper as um, as possible. Right, so there's my grid going around my paper uh, in a funny angle. So my bug is going to essentially look like this. It's going to look like he's crawling across that way. And then later on, when we do something different um, in the next lessons, I'm going to have perhaps another bug over here, but overlapping or underlapping this one. And then I might get a butterfly and put it over here. So we're already, which is really cool, we're already creating a composition from um, the things that we're going to be studying and drawing. OK, so um, I'll zoom in a bit so that you can get an idea of um, how to get started if you've not done so much of this before. So obviously you need to make sure that the square you're drawing or even the row is the one that you selected on here. So um, obviously this second one across here is in this in this square. Just here. I'll turn it around that way so it's a bit easier to see perhaps. OK, so um, now if you if you think you're going to get a bit lost looking at everything, the other little trick you can do, which I always mention, is that you can you can fold your sheet of paper over like this. So that means, of course, that you're not going to be distracted by the rest of the image. You can just see those squares on their own. There's not much else going on in the background. There's nothing going on in the background. So I can just draw that. And then what you do is you start to draw it. Now, if your grid is exactly the same size, this is a little um, quick way of doing it. You can line up your squares almost so they're over the top. And then you can just put a little mark. So you know exactly where things are starting. And if you want the end or the side of his uh, pincers, you can just move it slightly aside, line it up completely, move it slightly aside, put a dot. All right. So this is brilliant um, if you've not done much drawing before or even just you want to get the accuracy. Right. I use grids sometimes if I'm doing portraits and things. So it's a really brilliant way to help you um, get cracking with getting the, getting the right shapes in the right place so you can start shading. All right, so I've made a couple of marks. I know roughly where everything's going to go. So I can start drawing it in. If you're not sure, use your pencil again, make a mark. So I'm drawing the outline of this in a 2B. So it's not too soft at this point, because if you use um, like a really soft pencil when you're doing your um, initial part of your drawing, you'll probably find it smudges really easily. Uh, in fact, you know, if you do find it is smudging, put a piece of paper under your hand as you're working as well. OK, uh, so I've got that pince a bit and then I've got this um, antennae thing. So I imagine sort of feeling his way around. And I've got this hairy kind of. What's it just down here? <laughs> I'm going to have to find out the names. <laughs> right. There we go. So. I've got that shape in there and then I can move on to the second one or I could just say, all right, I'm going to put in, I'm going to put in this bit. So for long uh, straggly bits like this, what you can do is work out where the end of it is, work out where the beginning starts and draw a line. And then start putting in these um, little shapes, drippy shapes. All right. And uh, you don't need to draw it dark at this point because let's face it, we might get something wrong. And in fact, as you learn about an object that you're drawing, you'll spot mistakes uh, and that's perfectly all right. That's normal to, to do that, as I always say. 
There we go. Okay, so I've got his little antenna. I think there's probably these are probably a little bit big, but I can always go back and correct those um, later on. All right. So um, and then obviously when you've done that one, you can move on to the next shape. And in fact, you can check how your drawing's coming along by lining up the photo to your drawing. So I can see now that that all lines up reasonably well. So I'm happy with that, and I can move on to the other um, pincer on the other side. And then I'll go on to the I want to say mandible or something, but I don't know. I'm going to find out. OK, right. So um, that's what we're going to do now. Um, you'll see me working on this one. Um, so but if you've got any questions or anything, I will, um, of course, help you with that and give you some feedback or whatever. OK, so um, here we go. So um, as you saw, I'm using the grid to help me draw out all the main shapes first of all and that's just what I do in the first part of this drawing is I'm using uh, the grid that you saw me make to help me uh, put together all of the shapes of the um, insect um, in order to then start to draw in all the shadows and the textures and so forth. So as I mentioned before you can fold the paper so that you can match up the shapes that you're drawing and you'll see me through most of this um, as you can see here I'm using the photo and the, the handy thing is that the photo is the same size as the drawing in, in here because I printed off the photo quite large or at an A4 size so that means I can just put the photo over and check my drawing as I go along um, and make little dots or indicators with um, my pencil just so I know exactly where those different shapes are going to appear. So we end up with a drawing that's got all the shapes in the right place quite quickly. Um, it does still take a little bit of checking back on what you've done. Um, there are a few bits that I do that I get a little bit in the wrong place or even the shape of um, the thorax which I found out is the name for that part of the insect so the thorax is the middle bit there and um, I've just drawn and the back of it there is the abdomen on this beetle um, so the shape of it um, you saw me just a second ago I just changed the shape and the size of my abdomen um, on my insect there and I go that leg that I've just drawn in I notice a bit later on was slightly lower um, I don't think that matters too much particularly but um, it's nice to go back and correct things sometimes. Um, so on here um, I start off with a 2B pencil so earlier on I mentioned starting with a 6B pencil a nice soft pencil but there's quite a lot of detail in um, those uh, bits at the front just there so using um, a slightly harder lead or harder um, graphite um, it is quite useful because um, your pencil is going to stay a bit sharper for a bit longer but I can equally with a 2B I can get quite dark um, with it and get some good tones and things in um, and you know because there's quite a lot of detail here I can I can keep doing that um, in a in a little while I when I go over to do the abdomen I do switch to um, a 6B so I kind of carry on with this part for a short while and then I have a little bit of a, a move over to the other side of the insect um, when I decide that I want to talk about something quite specific with techniques that you can use. So here we go, we're on the on the back of the um, the insect now, the abdomen. And you see I'm using um, the side of the pencil like I did during the demonstration a short while ago. Now this tool that we've got here um, you, you can see I'm, I'm using the end of um, a sharp kind of tool um, and basically I'm indenting the paper um, in order to keep some of those highlights um, going on in, in, the, um, in the textures in there and you can see me just drawing all of those dots. I'm doing rows of dots just like um, on the abdomen of the insect that I'm drawing so lots of rows of dots um, because you've got that kind of texture on the back and then as I shade over the top 
those dots, because I've indented paper quite hard, will stay, for the most part, quite white, unless I shade over them really heavily, they'll stay quite white. So you end up keeping some of those highlights that would be a, a quite difficult to draw in if you were to use um, just the pencil on its own to do that, or a rubber, for example. So I've used uh, here, you can see now though, um, there are shadows on those dimples and dots on the back of the abdomen. So I'm putting some of the shadows in as well. Um, I'm not, because of time limits and because, um, because it's a bit of a nightmare, um, what I do is I, I literally, I don't literally copy every single detail on the back of that abdomen. I'm trying to get a likeness of the abdomen using my, um, using my graphite pencils here. So um, I work um, over the top, looking at the idea of the texture, whilst trying to get the form and shape and the 3D effect of um, the overall abdomen in there as well. Um, so I'll come back and keep working on that as we progress through the drawing. And again, building up lots of layers of textures and lines and so forth to really start getting a sense of that texture, but also the form, as I mentioned. So try it out. Um, you can buy specialist tools. Um, I think that was a Derwent tool I was using to do the embossing to keep the highlights. Um, but you could use something a bit sharper. Um, the, the end of that uh, Derwent tool that I was using was had a little round bit on the end so the paper wouldn't um, tear when you did the the lines and things. So it is worth having a look at what kind of tool you could use. You could buy one or you could go out and um, you could actually make one, I suppose, or so I did suggest maybe using a compass point, but because it's so sharp, it's designed to actually tear through the paper when you make a circle, isn't it? So see what you can find. Um, so uh, just a few minutes ago, I used um, the paper, um, blending stick on the abdomen's mouth just to smooth off some areas. I didn't do too much of that, um, but now you can see I'm doing exactly what I did on the abdomen on the thorax now. So I'm just, there's quite a lot of patterning on this particular piece of his back or his thorax just there. So I'm, I'm looking at those patterns and really just sketching them in nice and quickly to start to get some of that detail in there as well. And then as soon as you start shading over the top, I do actually use a 2B here and not a 6B. Um, I think I'll probably come back in with a 6B in a little while. But yeah, it, it's good fun doing it like this. And then of course, if you if you want some extra areas that are going to be a bit lighter on the on the back there, or indeed your insects got that, you can come back in with the soft putty rubber and and pull out some of those um, graphite um, those graphite dark areas with that to add in some of those highlights and pull those out of the picture. So I even go back over here and start adding some of the indents in there. And you can see overall, I have got quite a lot of texture in there now. It would obviously you could refine this quite a lot more. That back, the abdomen um, bit there looks kind of a bit more silky, I guess, um, like folded, stretched fabric over the back. So I would probably work back into that area and, and try to make it look more like that using the putty rubber and some uh, more lines across the back. But Look how the, the texture starts to appear on there. It's really nice. So anyway, um, have a go at doing that and we'll um, probably be working with pens next in a couple of weeks. Have a lovely um, week and see you soon.